I may, I should say. Uh, you're obviously no stranger to doing voice acting and animation mm -hmm. and video games. What differences and the challenges do you have doing just an audio-driven story? Well, I mean, that's it. It's, a, it's an audio drama. Like, all you have is your voice, and the audience is probably, you know, looking at the car ahead of them or in their kitchen cooking. Um, you don't have, I mean, even in a cartoon, you have, uh, you, have, you have the animators who make incredible animation, um, and they have, you know, there's a, a person who is a surrogate for your voice that they can actually watch. Uh, but this, when it comes to performance, it all has to be finger voice. You know, there's nothing that we can communicate with our faces or like a cartoon face. So um, that was definitely the challenge. But uh, I have a, I have a little bit of experience with this. Um, I. I produce a Dungeons and Dragons podcast um, that my friends uh, they created. Uh, it's called Hero Club, and yes, that is a plug for Hero Club. Um, but what they do is um, they basically cut out all the crosstalk of D and D, and they just kind of present it as a radio play. So I don't know. I kind of I spent years doing that with them, and I think that if anything, that prepared me the most for this project. Uh, but also Titus Welliver is an incredible director, so we were in good hands. What drew you to the role of Brian? Like, what was your favorite part about? Him. I like that he's uh, kind of torn between two worlds. Obviously, he has that family history with his uh, dad being a thief. Uh, I like that he's trying to, you know, make a new life for himself. Uh, I like, I don't know, the best characters are ones with a, with a, with a real conflict like that, where they're being pulled in two different directions. So, I, I mean, the, the character was really compelling to me, but also the story. I just thought it was, a, I, I couldn't put it down. I just kept flipping through it. Um, and that's just a credit to Michael's writing, so I, I just felt like I had to be part of it. Like when you lend your role to a voice, or mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, yeah. when you do a voice role, does it make you want to do that in live action one day? Uh, uh, do the voice role in live action? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I have a weird history with that. I did an episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds mm -hmm. where I got to bring uh, Brad Boimler um, from Lower Decks to live action, and that was so fun. I, mean, I don't think I've ever had more fun than doing that. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, like if, if it's ever a possibility, I, I, I would love to. And I think this is a story that could work, the safe man's a story that could work just as well uh, in live action. I'd love to see it. Was this a production that you recorded all your parts separately, or were you able to have a little bit of back and forth with either Titus or some of the other actors? Uh, we, had, we, had, it, we were all in the same studio. Uh, sometimes in different rooms, but always reacting off of each other, which is a real rarity these days. Like typically, when I do um, voiceover, I think it's just I don't know. COVID made things a little complicated, but also uh, you know everyone has various schedules and they try to get people when they can. But with this one, I was really impressed with the team. They tried to get everybody in there uh, to kind of bounce off of each other, and it was just so much fun. And Titus. Uh, as an incredible director, but also an incredible scene partner, and um, no, I, I got I got a little too used to it. I like I want that back. I want to do that more often because it kind of felt like you know, like Orson Welles and like the Mercury Theater. Like that's it's such a radio plays are such a cool thing, and I'm glad that the audio drama has kind of brought that back. You can imagine the faces you guys are making. Oh yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of faces. <laughs> so so how do they direct you? Is it like a table read when it comes to this? Yeah, it's, it's essentially a table read where, um, like a scene with Titus, for example, like we'll just be, they set up two microphones um, in a room and uh, we're just, we're reading off of each other. We have a script in front of us. Um, but it's, it's nice to, you know, understand what the actor is bringing to their role so you can naturally react off of that. The best thing they did with this was for the more action bits, like there's a whole heist at one point, um, that's just... <laughs> I, they put a, a lav mic on me, um, and I just ran through the hallway. Like I just like they did, like the hallway of the studio several times throughout the throughout the story. It's just me running through the hallways of the studio screaming, um, and it just it kind of captures that. You know, obviously it's not a soundproof booth uh, with incredible audio, but you know the story lends itself to. You know, there's there's always a camera recording in our story, right? So it was really cool to. I don't know. They, they, it was really nice as an actor to get that energy of like hastily running because it's so weird to replicate that when you're just standing still. <laughs> and um, no, it was really. I really love how they approached uh, the recording process. It was really awesome. How different is that recording experience when you're a director also has experience for being a Is there a different language platform between the two? Oh yeah, like yeah. No, Titus is. A, he's such an incredible actor, um, and he is a real actor's director as well. Like there's a. 
I don't know. You kind of just, uh, there's a second-hand nature to it where you already kind of speak the same language, and I, I, always, I always love that. And um, we became really good friends. Like, we still hang out. <laughs> like, I, I genuinely love Titus so much. He's so great. Oh, it's so great. I brought it. I brought it myself. Uh, no. Um, uh, no, it's so nice to, I, you know, voice acting and live action work are so different, but uh, the biggest benefit for me of voice acting is just showing up and I can, I can wear whatever I want and not have to go through hair and makeup and I can just be in my PJs and that's fine. Um, I've never actually done that though, and I want to now. I want to actually show up in pajamas, a thing I don't have. Um, just like old fashioned pajamas. I gotta buy some and I gotta show up in a booth. Um, but no, it, it is really, but I often find that when I'm doing voice work, uh, I am very physical, you know, even though um, no one's gonna see it. I am like, it really helps to move your arms. I almost never sit down. Uh, I'm usually just like trying to jump around uh, one part of the room essentially. Like I can't move too much because the mic won't pick me up, but. Um, it is nice to keep the energy up and, and get physical with it. Just yeah. wondering how all that huffing and puffing. There's a lot of huffing and puffing, and that yeah. was and that was great that they just let me kind of run around the studio. I felt bad for anyone else working there because it was just <laughs> Jack Quaid running through the halls and screaming. <laughs> That's what they had to deal with. Yeah. One more question. Oh, yeah. You've got to have your hands in so many different things when you're constantly working. What really makes you want to do the project when it comes across? I think if the story is something that I would be interested in as a fan, I, that makes me want to do it. Like when it comes to, like let's say The Boys, I remember reading that first script um, of the first episode and being like, man, I would watch the hell out of the show. Um, I really want to make sure I book this, I really want to audition well, um, but if I can't be Huey, I would love to be an extra. Like if I have that feeling about a project, then I, I know that I, I have to do it. Um, and that just speaks to Michael's writing and how it was such a page turner. And I was like, I can't not be a part of this. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. 